Riley Chow from Gold Derby here with Juliet Rylance. On Perry Mason, you played Della Street, who is a carryover from the original novels and the original series. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, sexual tension between her and Perry Mason, uh, so I've been told by Wikipedia, uh, which is less of a factor in this version of the story in which Della is a lesbian, uh, which is not something that I imagine you're able to talk about before the show came out. But now that the show has come out, uh, I was wondering what your take on that was. Well, I really love that Ron and Rollin made this choice um, for, for a number of different reasons. But the first being the fact that I used to watch Perry Mason with my dad, actually, when I was younger. And um, what I loved about the series was that Perry and Della had this very sort of flirtatious, kind of cheeky, naughty, fun, supportive relationship. But it never really, it was, it was never anything overtly sexual. It was sort of this kind of rapport between them that was kind of fascinating. And I love the fact that this series, because it's a prequel to that original story, um, Della and Perry actually really can't stand each other at the beginning of this. And all through the series, you have this wonderful kind of journey that they make together in discovering the things that they actually find quite similar about each other to themselves. And, and sort of that relationship develops and becomes much more, um, sort of where you sort of see Della and Perry live in, in the original series. So it's a lovely progression of their journey. Um, but particularly, so I love the fact that it kind of mirrors that in a similar way. But what makes it so interesting is for, for Della is that I, is by her being gay, she's, especially in that period, um, she's had the secret that she's had to work against and fight through her whole life. And she's arrived in LA and she's been there a long time. And she's a very solitary character because she's carrying this sort of secret, um, a huge part of who she is. And so it immediately kind of makes it very interesting. It makes her as a character quite an enigma at the beginning of the series. And, and it also makes both Perry and Della loners. They've had to kind of be slightly outside of society. And that's a really interesting dichotomy um, for both of the characters at the start of the show. I like that you say that you have some familiarity with the kind of source material. I feel like so often with these, you know, reboots, revivals, it's kind of like, you know, that was its own thing and we're going to do something yeah. else. Yeah, yeah for, for me, I, I was quite, um, I actually, I really loved the original series and I really loved Della. I thought it, she was such a, um, Barbara Hale played Della and I, I'm a huge fan of her. So it, it felt actually quite scary at the beginning to think, well, how, do, how does one go about this? Um, and again, I love the fact that because it's a prequel, there was some room for showing another side of her that we hadn't seen. And so obviously at the beginning of, of our story, Della's pretty feisty and she's fed up with E.B. Jonathan, John Lithgow's character, and she's sort of holding everything together and she doesn't know why we're bringing this Perry Mason onto the case and he's such a disaster. And, so there's a lot of kind of fight and, and um, anger in her, actually, about the fact that she's probably at the beginning of the story more capable than any of them, but doesn't get a look in and, and has to kind of deal with being one step ahead of all of these men <laughs> at, every, at every turn for quite a while. Um, so it's a lovely, I love that shift in her. And I think Barbara Hale would have, would have liked it too. How do you think you're going to play Adela differently in the second season after that arc over the first season? That's a really good question. Um, I think that the first season, particularly sort of particularly in the time that we were making it, and obviously then it aired in COVID, it had this very sort of heavy, dark feel about it, the whole show, which I loved. I love that Tim Van Patten created this world that was... Um, really gritty and, and, and kind of dirty and, and ugly in some ways and shot obviously beautifully. Um, and I like the fact that this next phase for them, now Perry and Della have formed this team and with Chris Chalk's character, um, it's, it's pretty exciting to think that maybe it's a bit lighter, that there's sort of a lighter energy. And I think something we played with a lot last year was um, the speed, the rhythm, like how do they speak? You know, how do these characters speak to each other? And I think we want to push that further next year. Um, so lighter and brighter and, and probably just those rhythms of the period to uh, be allowed to come through a bit more. 
You've got new showrunners for the second season, Jack Amiel and Michael Begler coming on. Uh, you previously worked with them on The Nick. Uh, I'm wondering what kind of conversations you've had with them so far. Well, we've been so lucky on this show because we've had obviously HBO and um, Robert and Susan Downey, who have just been amazing. And we've had Tim Van Patten and David Franco, our DP. And then Ron and Rollin, who created this incredible first story. Um, and, and now the Nick team, <laughs> who I, I just adore. And um, they're such wonderful writers and they work so well together and they write so quickly. And um, the dialogue um, that they write, I think is just so um, witty and sharp and quick, light on its feet. And so um, we've, had, we've had discussions about what next. Um, obviously, what what plans for the next season? Um, and it's it's exciting. It feels really exciting to me what they're coming up with. Um, so yeah, we've just we've we had an initial chat that was maybe about two hours long about all the things we'd love Della to do. And um, I think sort of we're working our way through that list. So we'll see what happens. Now, with that show set in 1900 and then this one in the early 1930s, are you able to kind of bring anything from, you know, what you learned about crafting that performance in the Nick to Perry Mason, or is it just too much of a different time? I, I That's a really good, good question. Um, for the fact that I always think period work always informs other period work. Um, I think for the Nick, we... We really kind of did a you know a dive a deep dive into all the source material of New York in that period and and women in that period and etiquette and table etiquette and and you know how one walks and how one's supposed to sit and all these different things and so there's a kind of um part of the brain that gets very attuned to kind of grabbing that information quite quickly and and getting it into your physical memory and and I think that that's a muscle. Um, that gets worked. And so I think with any period work, that muscle kind of just wakes up and starts firing again. So um, the Nick actually did, there were things that um, informed this. Um, also just the fact that when you're in period, you know, you're in such different clothing, the, the girdles, the corsets, they do so much work for you. Um, so that's also very, very interesting. And Emma Potter, who did the costumes for Della and for everyone, um, but made Della's costumes was sort of rigorous about trying to find clothing that would also help that really sort of immerse oneself in the world. I talked to your executive producers, uh, I asked them who was the, or like what was the hardest role to cast? And they said it was actually your role. They said that you only came on about maybe three weeks before uh, <laughs> you started shooting. Yeah, they said you were suddenly available, but you had this confidence and elegance that they loved. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, do you know why your role was uh, so, so difficult to cast? It, it's a really strange role at the beginning. Obviously I read the first two episodes and there's a great couple of scenes where she's feisty and you know, the scene with Perry and they're walking down the hallway and it's, there's this whole kind of rapport and angst between them, which is kind of great. But Den Della was a bit of an enigma, I think, at the beginning. I think to everyone, she is a bit of an enigma. In the original series, she's sort of always just there and she's in the office and she's there at the end of every episode and she kind of wraps things up and they have a little scotch together and, and go home, you know, and that's kind of it. And so you don't really learn a lot about her. And I think partly all of us, when I arrived, I landed in LA and met with Tim and Howard Cordner, who was also writing on the show and Ron and Rollin. And we all kind of went, well, who, who is Della? So we immediately set about writing a backstory. Um, and they came up with this wonderful backstory for her. And then, then she started becoming more real. But I think it's very hard. Like often when you're recreating a character, you know, a character, an iconic character, with, like Perry Mason, there's a lot more to draw from. But in a sense, Della's also a kind of iconic character and somewhere embedded in the American culture um, in our sort of, you know, membrane. Um, and I, but yes, yet yeah, we know so little about her. So I think it, it just took a while to kind of figure her out. What do you think you were able to identify about her um, that kind of got you the part? Floored me. Um, I think she's. I think she has an incredibly strong 
need for justice, for things to be just and right, and, and, and a, a determination to push and push and push for getting to the truth of something. And I love that quality and I love that about her. And I think that's the thing that most excited me about her was that someone who's just doggedly determined to fight for the truth. And yeah, I just, that's the thing that I, I love the most about her and, and that she's tough and won't take any bullshit from anyone. And which again, for that period is, is unusual. And I think she does it in a really subtle, um, sensitive way most of the time. So all those qualities, I think I was just very drawn to her. And I think when you're drawn to a character, maybe that comes across and people are like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. You mentioned that you came up with a backstory with Tim Van Patten. Uh, what is that backstory? Oh God, it's very in depth. It would probably take about two hours <laughs> to go into. Um, but she's up, she's sort of, we, we came up with where she's from and um, we've sort of, we, we sort of placed her somewhere in the Midwest, sort of maybe Iowa. Um, we moved, we changed that a couple of times. Um, and she's had a, she's come from quite a well-to-do family. Um, and, and eventually after being engaged, uh, to be married and living the sort of perfect life that her father and her family would want her to, she kind of rebels, tells the truth and, and is discerned. And so comes to LA to, to try and find work. Um, and I think, yeah, there's a lot of different parts of that story, but, but, um, yeah, it, it kind of, it was a nice, I also kind of moved to America when I was 28 and I, I now sort of, I'm a bit in between, but, um, there's something really interesting about characters. You've just landed somewhere, you know, from somewhere else. And I feel like that's much more something that Americans understand the whole New York to LA back and forth journey, but that's very foreign to, to Brit because um, we don't have it. We don't have the kind of, I guess it would be Scotland to London and it's not quite the same thing. So um, I find that, that, that aspect of her journey quite interesting. Like, what was her life before LA? Yeah. So in this show, you're surrounded by not only Emmy winners, but really uh, Emmy wins that have been extremely acclaimed in recent years, like Matthew Reese for The Americans and Tatiana Maslany for Orphan Black and John Lethgo for both uh, The Crown and Dexter, actually, uh, recently. I'm wondering what you learned from them. Oh, God, they're all such extraordinary actors. Um, they're so unique. I think it's the uniqueness. I think um, when I watch Tatiana on screen, and, and in a scene, you know, she's so, um, she's just, everything that happens is of her. There's nothing that's, um, uh, feels fictional or, or grabbed from something else. It's sort of all the source is, is something from inside her that's completely uniquely her. And, and I feel the same about John and Matthew. Um, I think it's that ability to really just kind of say, this is who I am and use every single muscle. Um, and, and that's, that's a, a sort of just a joy to, to be around and work with and learn from. And John I've known for a long time and I just adore him. So having scenes with him, so many scenes with him was just, um, was just incredible. I always learned so much from John. Um, and Matthew's really just, a, Tim Van Patten described Matthew as his North Star on this job while he was, you know, directing this whole thing and putting it all together. And, and, and he, he, he really is that. He, he is like a, a North Star, like a bright light that's sort of leading everybody through, through the story. Um, it's a wonderful quality for a leading actor to have. I saw an interview that you did with uh, John Lithgow, uh, you know, another one that you did for this show. And then it was with the AV club and then they were asking, you know, about his character. And then he started talking about how like, oh yeah, you learn all these things about him even after he departs the series. And like, even after he exits. And then I look at the data on this and it actually came out before uh, the show aired. Uh, oh. I'm wondering like, <laughs> oh, no. do you remember that interview and just having to like hold a poker face? Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> I remember a couple times after interviews, John and I going, was that meant to happen? I don't think that was meant to happen. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's fabulous. His, John's, the fact that EB exists, you know, it exists in the, in our, 
um, story even after he's gone. I mean, he's such an important character to both um, Perry and Della's journey. Um, he's such a catalyst. Um, yeah, so I love the fact that Perry, and actually it's really how Perry and Della bond is through their love of EB and the feeling that, that now they're in, now they have to solve this for him. Um, so I love the way that Ron and Rollin wrote those little moments of us remembering EB or something that we loved about him or having a joke about him. It was really nice. Okay, Juliet. Well, uh, thanks very much for chatting with Cole Derby about Perry Mason today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.